the course on design of power electronic converters. So, we were discussing snubbers and uh, we were we had started deriving the um, RC uh, snubber circuits and in that uh, we had seen that it ultimately looks like an RLC circuit. We have to analyze an RLC circuit and there we have three cases. One is your under damped, then your over damped and critically damped. So, under damped condition the derivation we had seen and then now uh, with that derivation we had obtained the expressions for peak voltage across the device and also we had obtained the rate of change dv by dt average dv by dt in the beginning. That expression also we had obtained in terms of uh, chi the initial current factor and zeta the damping ratio. So, now let us uh, further continue with that and uh, do the derivation for over damped case and critically damped case. So, just for you to uh, recall that this was the circuit uh, with which uh, we were doing the analysis. So, here you, this is your RC snubber and LP is the parasitic inductance and uh, this is uh, your uh, diode and across it is the voltage E and uh, this voltage can reach up to a maximum of E1 and this is what we want to limit the spike. So, we have to derive an expression for this and then IRR is the reverse recovery current and uh, this is the current at T equal to 0 which flows through this number. The initial capacitor voltage is 0 that means there is no charge at the capacitor at time T equal to 0. So, this was the KVL equation that uh, we had uh, written when we had applied KVL in this loop and uh, then this is the second equation for E which is E minus of uh, LP DIT by DT and these are the initial conditions. And uh, then with that uh, we had obtained uh, this uh, differential equation for which we, we had uh, this uh, roots these S1 and S2 and this was the damping ratio zeta alpha by omega 0 and uh, this is the solution of the differential equation for IT and uh, we had discussed this case of under damped. Now, we are going to discuss uh, these two over damped case and critically damped case zeta greater than 1 and zeta equal to 1. So, for under damped case this is uh, uh, one important result that we had obtained that is uh, we had to find out this time T1. Now, this time T1 came in terms of uh, uh, tan function tan omega d T1 and uh, this is in terms of uh, zeta and chi and then this was denoted as uh, f of zeta comma chi. And then these are other two important results that is your E1 by E your peak voltage by the blocking voltage E in terms of your zeta and uh, chi and this dv by dt average which is your E1 by T1 and this also was written similarly as a function of uh, this zeta and uh, chi and uh, then here also this natural frequency also came here and this the same could also be expressed in terms of this E square by LP I by LP into IRR multiplied by chi. Now, uh, for over damped case and critically damped case we are uh, going to do the derivation in the similar manner and uh, reach out to uh, these results. And uh, we had done uh, the same thing for your uh, no damping case zeta equal to 0 as well. So, now having recalled what we had done last lecture, now let us uh, look here for O damped case zeta greater than 1. So, here this is the solution of the equation, the general solution and uh, now when we have this zeta greater than 1 we redefine this omega d as equal to root over of alpha square minus omega 0 square which can be written as omega 0 root over of zeta square minus 1. Note that when we were discussing under damped case uh, this the square root was uh, square root over 1 minus zeta square. 
uh, since zeta was less than 1. Now, we have reversed this. Now, the definition for omega d is this is equal to omega 0 root over of zeta square minus 1 as zeta is greater than 1. So, now uh, both the roots are real and so we can uh, write these uh, like this e power minus alpha t a 1 e power omega d t plus a 2 e power minus omega d t. Now, this uh, e power omega d t and e power of minus omega d t this can be written in term of um, your cos h and sin h your cos hyperbolic and sin hyperbolic functions we can write it. So, that is how uh, we have written you have expanded and uh, then further we try to reduce it. So, when you try to reduce this is what you will be obtaining and let us say a 1 plus a 2 equal to b 1 and a 1 minus a 2 equal to b 2. So, this is the uh, solution that we will be obtaining in terms of uh, cos h and sin h. Now, as uh, we did before uh, we do the same procedure we go for initial conditions. So, at t equal to 0 your i 0 equal to i r r. So, this is 0. So, cos h omega d t is 1. So, i r r equal to b 1. Then uh, further we differentiate this i t. So, d i t by d t you differentiate you will be obtaining this uh, equation and then again uh, substitute for t equal to 0 and then uh, we had this equation e minus l p d i by d t which uh, your uh, small e was equal to r s i r r. This one is uh, this is equal to e and this is equal to r s into i r r. So, uh, then um, we obtain from here l p d i t by d t um, at t equal to 0 this is equal to e minus r s i r r. So, substitute all that same here uh, in this uh, d i t by d t this equation. So, then we we obtain this your e minus r s i r r by l p. So, this is what you are going to get the b 2 as. Further what we do is we again use this uh, equation and substitute for d i t by d t that we had just obtained in last uh, slide and uh, then uh, you try to solve it you try to reduce it and uh, when you reduce it just substitute here for uh, this one as omega d square minus alpha square equal to minus omega 0 square now and omega 0 square equal to 1 by l p c s. So, uh, you will be reducing this to i r r by c s omega d. So, what you will observe is that this equation is uh, similar to uh, the one that we had obtained for underdamped case. The only difference is here this is cos hyperbolic and sin hyperbolic ek, uh, by instead of cos and sin. Then we differentiate uh, d e by d t. So, uh, with on differentiating E you will be ob obtaining this uh, try to reduce it. So, when you reduce this is what you are going to obtain. This equation is also similar to the d by dt equation in case of underdamped condition only thing is now these are all cos h and sin h and uh, this term there is uh, instead of uh, uh, omega d square minus alpha square this is plus over here. Further what we try to do is we try to obtain the peak voltage the spike that is E 1 at time T 1 and that maxima can be obtained by differentiating this with uh, and equating it to 0. So, d by d t equated to 0 and uh, then you try to solve it uh, and you solve this is uh, what you are going to get tan omega d t 1 equal to these 2. Now, uh, since this is uh, similar to what we had done in case of under damped condition I have not shown here again all the steps 
uh, just note down that you, you this is uh, similar to what uh, we got for under damped condition the expression that we are obtaining and so you uh, when you solve it for zeta and chi by substituting it you will be getting similar expression only difference is this is now zeta square minus 1 instead of 1 minus zeta square and so we represent this function as g uh, zeta comma xi instead of f zeta comma xi which was it was how it was represented for underdamped condition. Then uh, next it is similar we try to obtain uh, T1 form here. So, uh, this is uh, your tan h. So, tan h inverse of uh, this will be g zeta comma xi by omega 0 root over of zeta square minus 1. And uh, then further you write uh, this one your q zeta comma xi which is your E1 by E and you substitute for everything this is what you are going to get. Now, this equation again is uh, similar to what we had obtained in your underdamped case only difference here is this is tan h inverse and this function is uh, g instead of f. And this is a very important result that uh, we obtain because this is what we are further going to use for your snubber design. Then uh, by using it we can uh, also obtain this E1 by T1 and E1 by T1 this is what you substitute this is what you will be getting. Okay, this is also similar to under damped case only thing is this is tan h and this is uh, g and this is now here zeta square minus 1 instead of 1 minus zeta square. So, this is also another important result uh, which we will be using for your snubber design. Now, uh, let us go to the critically damped case zeta equal to 1. So, critically damped case uh, now here omega 0 equal to alpha and i t equal to a 1 plus a 2 t e power of minus alpha t this you uh, must be knowing for your RLC circuit uh, this is uh, what is the solution that comes for critically damped case because both the roots are equal now. Um, and so again do the same thing trying to obtain the this constants a 1 and a 2 by using the initial conditions. So, at t equal to 0 i 0 equal to i r equal to b 1 and then further uh, we have this uh, you differentiate it uh, d i t by d t. So, when you differentiate this is what you are going to get again substitute for t equal to 0 you know that r s i r r equal to e minus l p d i t by d t. So, at t equal to 0 this is equal to e minus r s i r r substitute back in this equation. So, you will be obtaining for your a 2. So, now using it uh, we have uh, this uh, expression for e we uh, substitute for l p d i t by d t just obtained in last slide and you solve it this is what you are going to get. So, this is the expression for your uh, E and of course, we here try to replace this uh, alpha L p alpha L p equal to R s by 2. So, that is what uh, we will be uh, getting here. Now, next thing as uh, did before differentiate. So, d by d t you do it then try to reduce it once you reduce this is what you are going to get. Okay. Then after that what we do is that we equate this to 0 to try to obtain the maximum that is your E1 and let us say that occurs at time T1. So, when you do that and uh, then uh, we equate it this is what this alpha T1 is what you are going to get. Okay. So, this one you equate it to 0 and rearrange this is what you will be obtaining you, you can do it it's, it's simple. Then uh, we try to replace this R s i r r by 
e by 2 e and uh, you can do the substitution and by doing this uh, rearrangement you will be obtaining chi as equal to rsi rr by 2 e which here you can replace that. So, this alpha t1 comes out in terms of this uh, as a function of chi and then from here t1 is equal to 1 by alpha. Now, alpha here is equal to omega 0. So, uh, 1 by omega 0 to minus 3 chi by 1 minus chi. Next what we do is that uh, we are going to apply for this alpha t1 in the expression of uh, E. So, we have uh, obtained this expression for E. Now, we have to substitute for alpha t1 here at all these places and here also this is t1. So, when you substitute that you will be obtaining the expression for E1 the peak voltage. So, you substitute try to reduce when we reduce it this is what we are going to get. So, E1 by E finally turns out to be is equal to 1 plus 1 minus chi E power of minus 2 minus 3 chi by 1 minus chi. So, this is the important result which we will be using for your snubber design. Then next uh, what we do is we again divide this by T1. So, E1 by T1 this is your average rate of rise in the beginning. So, that expression is also important. So, that also you substitute and then further you can uh, write in terms of this either you can write it as omega 0 e uh, multiplied by this or e square by L p i r r um, into chi multiplied by the same. So, this one is also another important expression. So, the key points of uh, this lecture are the same as uh, what we had discussed uh, before that the important results are this normalized uh, E 1 by E that is your peak voltage or the spike voltage divided by the blocking voltage and uh, the dV by dt rate of change of the voltage across the device uh, uh, in initially and that is obtained as uh, the spike voltage divided by the time it uh, takes to reach to that peak voltage. So, E 1 by T 1 and these two are obtained in terms of your initial current factor chi and the damping ratio zeta. And other important uh, terms which uh, you have to remember is your natural frequency omega 0 and uh, what is assumed to be known in this uh, derivation is your parasitic inductance LP and the reverse recovery current IRR and also the blocking voltage which is very easy to find out in whichever power electronic converter you are going to use. So, for all the cases we had uh, done the derivation and we obtained these expressions. Now, further we will be using these expression to do the snubber design. Thank you.